In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a provisional cast on. Some patterns will call for provisional cast ons. This is very common in toe up socks when you're knitting socks from the toe, starting from the toe up, or in patterns where you're making a, a scarf, an infinity scarf, where you're going to join the two ends of the scarf together. So by doing a provisional cast on, it allows you to have live stitches at, at sort of both ends of your work once you've taken off the provisional cast on. It's really not that difficult to do and I will show you how in just a few easy steps. Okay, so now for a provisional cast on, you do need a crochet hook and you need your knitting needles for your project. I'm just using these double pointed needles here for this, for this demo, but you don't need double pointed needles. Now the crochet hook that you're gonna use, you wanna make sure that it's the right hook for the kind of yarn that you're gonna be using for your project. So in this demonstration, I'm using this, this blue, sort of silver blue, um, silver gray blue yarn as my main working yarn. And what I will also need is a scrap yarn, and I'm just using this big pink colored, um, colored yarn. The key thing is you want the scrap, the scrap yarn to be a contrasting color to your main working yarn, and preferably a nice smooth yarn and of, of a similar, um, similar size or similar thickness. Okay, so leave about a four inch tail or so and make a slip knot. And in on the tail of that slip knot, go ahead and also make a knot. Okay, and I'll tell you why in just a minute. Now you're going to take that slip knot and insert your crochet hook and you're going to make a chain or you're, you're going to just make chains on here about three or four chains more than the number of stitches you need to cast on. So let's say your pattern ask, calls you to cast on um, 20 stitches or 30 stitches. Just add about three or four more chains and make a chain of 34. So I'm, I'm just going to do nine stitches in this sample that I'm going to show you. So I'm going to go ahead and chain about 13 chains just to give me four extra chains. Now when you're making these chains, you want to do them a little bit on the looser side. Um, don't be too tight. Um, don't hold your hook or pull your hook too tight when you're working on these chains. So let's see, I've got two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. That should be good. After you're done, just pull the yarn from that last one, snip it off, and pull it through. Okay, so there we have our little chain. Now this knot that I've tied on this on the slip knot end tells me which end is the slip knot end and which end is the, the non-slip knot end. So what you want to do is flip this chain and place it such that the slip knot end is, is on the right here. And I'm going to flip it over once more so you can see when you've made a chain, you'll notice how it's got it's got the V's lined up like that, right? And then on the back side, it's a bunch of dashes or hyphens. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our needle, we're gonna start from that slip knot end, we're gonna skip the first stitch, okay, and we'll go into the second stitch here, and I'm gonna actually insert my needle through that hyphen, all right, just like that. Now take your working yarn and leave a small bit of a tail four to six inches or so. And just make a loop like that. And all you're doing is inserting it and pulling it through that hyphen, okay? And now you've picked up one stitch from this crochet chain. So you're just gonna keep doing this, going to the next hyphen right here, okay? And pick up the next stitch. And you're just gonna do this till you have picked up the number of stitches your pattern calls, calls you to pick up. Uh, or calls for. So I'm just gonna do nine. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And again, you're just inserting in the next hyphen and the next hyphen and the next hyphen or, or dash. All right. And now once you've pulled that last stitch, this is not, this is an optional thing to do, but if you have one of these little clippy markers or you could even use a safety pin, 
um, just a regular metal safety pin you want to insert it into that last stitch that you've just picked up and this sort of gives you a marker when you're ready to to unravel these stitches and and pick these stitches back up um, it gives you a, an idea of where your first stitch is so right now I'm just gonna leave it in there you've just done a provisional cast on and cast on the number of stitches you would at that at this point just get started with your pattern so if your pattern calls for knitting the first row you'll just insert it right there and knit okay now if or once you've knit the, num the number of rows or you've done your pattern to the point where um, you are now or you now need to take out the the provisional cast on let me show you how to do that so here I have a sample that I've done where I did the same exact thing, did my little crochet chain, picked up the stitches and just knit a little bit. And at this point now I need to undo these stitches and pick them back up. So flip your work so that the non slip knot end is on this side. So the end that we had that little knot on, let that be on your left. And this one is right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna unravel this piece and again this is the scrap yarn I'm just gonna unravel that and this is why having those extra stitches on both ends helps um, at least one or two extra stitches on either end because it allows you to start pulling it and pull it once more and now we're at the point where we have that stitch so having this little marker helps because now you know this was the first stitch so you're gonna insert your needle okay and at this point you can take out the marker because you already have the stitch. Now for this first stitch, you're going to have to pull this yarn through your, your um, scrap yarn. You're gonna have to pull it through like so, okay? But once you've done that, and just be a little bit gentle here as you're pulling, because once you've done that, then the rest of the stitches will just come off really easily. So you can see right here, oh, let me use a different needle. You can see right here, here's the next stitch that I need to pull. And this is why having contrasting yarns helps. So insert right there and pull. Find your next stitch, which you can see is right here. Insert right there and pull. And so remember, we need to pull nine stitches because that's, that's what we had done in our provisional cast on. So you're just inserting and pulling. And at this point I'm going to count two, four, six, eight, and this is my last stitch. And the provisional cast on comes off. you have your stitches now your stitches may be twisted if they're twisted then you just want to untwist them so when when your stitch is on the needle the the if the front loop of the stitch is a little bit lower than the back loop then your then your um, stitch is twisted so you can just untwist them and and put them all back on in the right in the right way but there you have it this is how you would cast on the provisional cast on and then cast it off so you have live stitches on both ends that you can then either join by doing a kitchener stitch or you can continue your work in a different direction if you have any questions on this cast on or would like to see more videos please leave me a comment if you like the video please click the like button and if you want to see more videos um, and on all the projects that I'm gonna be um, putting on hopefully I'm gonna do one on socks in in the next week or so so if you want to stay tuned of all my videos please um, hit the subscribe button thank you for watching and happy knitting